Yeah, that Will Smith stuff, man. That was damn. That was low, bro. That yeah. was low. Dude, it was. Down. So we're we're already recording, by the way. I just I hit That's it fine. like when we started because yeah. the way we'd have to have like a. But I figured we were gonna talk about this. No, uh, you know, you so know I, what we're gonna talk about. I it, bro. it's the Will Smith thing, and I'm sure you agree with me on this. Is definitely because Will Will's a cuck. He's a yeah. He's he's not he's not a manly man to his wife. Mm-hmm. He allows her to walk over him. He allows her to publicly disrespect him. Okay, he doesn't like. I don't. As I'm not usually the one to to, to talk about how someone raises their children because I don't have any. But I I don't look at how he raises his kids and think that's like you're doing a good job because I would mm. never. I think raising a child in Hollywood is you know you're raising your kid around pedophiles and monsters. So creating a currency, would, it's like a currency. You're creating a currency that you might get some access to. Like if we go he, down the rabbit hole on that in, in that case, right? Yeah. Because if you have millions, of, in his case, where I was, here's my thought on all this, right? His he got emasculated, right? So he's down down the emasculated process. He got like you say, he got cocked, right? So he, right now he's in a position where where any chance that he, he can have to just let it explode in his emotional subconscious is thinking that he's standing up for himself. But in reality, he's just making sure that he goes down, 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 down the rabbit hole. Because what happened is you're not tackling the problem itself. You're just manifesting around the problem. And it looks like you confronting the problem. It looks like. Like, for yeah. example. The problem is his wife. That's yeah. His fucking problem. Basically. So basically what, what he does is this is my problem, right? The problem is my why, but I don't want to tackle it. Now, I'm going to give you the perception that I'm not tackling the, the problem by going against this person. This person has to happen to be Chris Rock. You hear the joke, bro? The joke is lame, bad, funny. Yeah, it wasn't, it, it, it was not even that good. It wasn't a good joke, but that it shouldn't wasn't that matter. But it's also you, the Oscars. No one fucking yeah. watches them. But would you stand up and just smack a guy because of a joke like that? You would never do that, but no, that's, that's feminine behavior in my yeah, opinion. yeah. That, that's he, when you lose your composure, that it's like into your emotions. That's kind of like a that's a womanly thing to yeah. fly off the handle and make an ignorant decision that affects who you are in that manner. Like, yeah. As a man, you you're supposed to be stoic and like yeah. maybe it's one thing if you're hanging out and a man disrespects your wife, yeah, you know, in a certain setting, and then yeah, slap him. Yeah. But yeah. this wasn't this wasn't that they wanted yeah. a bond. He insulted her. This was uh, this was he could have said something to him, pulled him aside. But Will exactly. knows Chris Rock isn't a fighter. Chris Rock is is one of the skinniest, smallest yeah. comedians you can find. He's not a fighter. He's not a thug. He's not a an MMA guy. He's not. Yeah, he grew up in New York, so he's probably thrown some punches, but he's his whole thing has been he's like, look, I wasn't a fighter, I'm a funny dude. Yeah. He would have been very different if this had been a bigger dude. If like Ricky yeah. Gervais, Ricky Gervais used to box, right? He can throw a punch. If this had been a lot of people joked, what if it was Joe Rogan or The Rock? What if dude, if it was Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle's a big dude. He wouldn't have done that. He was swing, he was swing a couple punches. He yeah, Will because Smith he took- did it because he was it was easy he was gonna bully a small the, low, the lowest hanging fruit mm-hmm. so he said like okay i feel this way i've been being disrespectful i'm just taking the longest the lowest long, uh hanging fruit and he took chris rock and i have to give chris rock props props because he he composed himself i'll tell you mike it's not easy to just get take a slap in the <laughs> fucking face <laughs> take no. a uh, slap in the face then you you back to, to reality and you're looking at everybody. Everybody's looking at you like, what what what, what just happened? Dude, I've I've been on stage when people have verbally attacked me, and I know how that feels. Yeah, and to have to physically. get back into a show to have someone personally, I would have fought Will right then and there. Yeah. I would have rolled on the ground, 
fucking punching, kicking, biting. I would have, I would have, I would have gone all in yeah. to fight him in that moment. Mm. Uh, I could not have, comp- but I think Chris probably had to think to himself, am I going to win this fight? Am I, uh, Chris was also like, dude, I think, I think Chris Rock realized I'm a millionaire. I'm a father. I'm 50 fucking years old, at least. And I, I made my life a success to get out of the hood, to get away from this kind of shitty fucking ignorant behavior. Am I, am I going to do this in front of, you know, obviously small numbers of people watching it right now, but as the video circulates, pe- people around the world saw this. Hundreds of millions of people have seen this video all over the world. All right. So he's probably thinking, is that what I'm going to do is, is roll around here, you know, just ro- roll around. And, you know, I, I think he, I got to give it to him. I would have done it. I would have fucking rolled around in the dirt with Will right there, like an animal, but you know, I also fully respect what Chris did. Exactly. Now the point is you have to give it. I think Chris Rock was completely shocked though. Like yeah, he, yeah, dude, he, he would, he would, Will Smith doesn't look like that kind of guy. So that's what I'm saying. Like, because he's not he, that kind of guy. He no, he's be. not, because he's just down to the emasculating process. I mean, he just he's just down there. It, even when he was going back and forth, keep your uh, my wife name out of your mouth. You can tell that his lips and your muscle cheek were down, like crying. He wanted to cry. Well, he, he cried to when, cry. He, when he came up yeah. to take the Oscar. I didn't. I just saw clips of it, but he did sob up. And yeah. You know, and- he, yeah, I, at first I thought when he was slapping Chris, he wanted to slap the men who fucked his wife. But I think about it more. Yeah. What he wanted to do was slap his fucking wife. All right. There That's go. what you he really head, wanted yeah. to do. Because what, what he was doing with Chris was he's been humiliated and he's, he's a bitch and he won't stand up for himself. He'd been humiliated before and he keeps letting it slide. And I've met guys like this who were tough guys. And I've met this with a lot of military dudes. A lot of, like, I met, um, I, won't, I won't say who it is, but someone I know who, this guy has killed people in war, all right? But he lets his women tell him what to do. And I know a lot of guys, soldiers and Marines that are like this. And they'll go out and start a fight with a guy at a bar because at the end of the day, they, they'll, they'll fight any dude but they're afraid to check their woman mm-hmm. and stand up to their woman. And that yeah. was, that was Will. Will yeah. is afraid to look his woman in the eyes and go, shut up, bitch. I'm Will yeah. Smith. I'm going to get somebody new. Well, it's too late for him, man. It's, um, too late. it's too late, bro. When, when she, because she played the game very well, where she manipulated him in a way that makes Will look as a, as the, as the one that created all this mess. I mean, we can we can go back and forward saying that he might create this mess because you didn't put your women in your place. You didn't do it. Didn't so therefore, you just opened this Pandora box to this monster that's coming with their with their snakes and just, you know, putting a lot of poison in your mind. OK, metaphorically. And this is what happened yeah. with him. She- that, that's what happens. Medusa, she, basically Medusa. She, I was gonna say she may not have any here, but she's a fucking Medusa, dude. <laughs> yeah, Medusa. <laughs> you can see this the the snake just coming dude, and just biting you, man. Especially with that goofy green outfit. It's like if, if you were gonna, if you were self conscious about your bald head, why did you wear something that drew so much attention to it? Right, like you couldn't. I, mean, have, I don't know. I just feel like there could have. I felt like she was wearing. She looked like a fucking sci-fi alien, dude. We go back. Well, I mean, we go back to the female nature. I mean, how they they're, they're okay. Some female nature. How a guy gets confident. Yep. Wait. Yeah. So we're back in the game. Um, so what I was saying is, what the hell was that again? You you we were talking about Will, uh, being an emasculated bitch. Yeah. His wife being a Medusa. Yeah, basically, as a man, you're always going to counter an experience like this. It's just up to you to just take that experience and just race above it, man. You have to. Well, he's, um, I'll say this. I think that 
maybe I'm talking out my ass here, but I don't think I am. I think Will's attitude is emblematic of our society Mm. in that we have become a more feminine society. And a result of hyper feminism is emotional attitudes. Because if you look at the people who, so, so the Will Smith thing has been divided into two groups. All right. There's the people that are like, fuck Will Smith and the people that are like, fuck Chris Rock, you deserved it. And the people say, fuck Chris Rock, uh, overwhelmingly more progressive. They're fall into the liberal progressive, uh, you know, more feminine. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they're not out like masculine type people. All right. Usually genderqueer or something like that, or, or it's women across Mm -hmm. the board. And their attitude is if, you make me feel a certain way, I'm allowed to do whatever you want. I want to. Whereas the, the male version of that is, it's my, re- my emotions are my responsibility. So if you piss me off, that's my fault. But the young, you know, like, you know, image of a chick protester is someone who goes, you made me feel a certain way. That way I'm allowed to do whatever I want to you. And it's very much a more feminine way of, of viewing life in general. I, I should get to cancel you because you made me feel a certain way. Uh, I came across your page. So I, I get people who report my shit all the time. Or when I've had wimp, people email bookers to try and get me thrown off shows. Yeah. It's always women. It's, it's always women. Always. And it's not that I don't make fun of men and women. I make fun of both of them. It's yeah. always it's usually white women, upper class white mm-hmm. women who do it across the board, which is that, and they're fine with me saying all this shit, making fun of all these different ideas. Or I, I'll trash all these different, you know, I don't, I'm not trashing, but I'm making jokes about me. I'm making jokes about people from New Hampshire or Boston or Americans or, you know, from other countries. Or, But the second I allocate humor towards a woman's responsibility in a relationship at her expense, they get angry. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, fuck you. And they try and fuck me out of a job. And that they're at, cause a guy would just go, not that guys can't be bitches about this too. But if I ever come across someone I don't like on social media and I get mad about it, I go, Oh, this is my fucking fault. I'm sitting in bed and I decided to get on Facebook or Twitter or TikTok and and put this negative shit in my life this is my fault i'm responsible for this i could have just read a book or not been on my phone i put this shit it's my fault that i feel a certain type of way whereas like if you have a i don't know if you've been in this situation you've seen this happen where we've all seen videos online of a girl gets angry at a guy at a bar or a club or wherever and she starts hitting him and then the guy finally breaks down and fucking gives her, gives her a whatever, backhand, a shove, a punch. And it's like, I can't believe you would do that. It's like, well, well what do you mean you couldn't believe? Like you, it, it, that sort of, I'm going to act insanely emotional without any regard for what the consequences mm. will be in the future. Kind of like how America's attitude towards Russia is right now where everyone's like, dude, we got to go to war with Russia. And some of us are like, hey, that would cause a nuclear war. I don't fucking care. Putin bad. It's just, it's a hyper-emotional, hyper-emotional feminine way of viewing the world, Mm -hmm. which is I have an emotion that I can't control and I don't want to, and I got to, I'm going to act on it. Even if by acting on it, I cause horrific problems for myself later on down the line. Mm. I think uh, that's a good point. Um, well, remember, uh, accountability is not a female trait, right? It needs to be used. No, <laughs> no it's, it's not a female trait, right? Because when you see female, you expect certain things, right? When you see male, you expect certain things, right? By, all, by biology, by a lot, by a lot. Oh, my God. Biologically. Biologically right? speaking. Yeah, there you go. So you expect certain things. Now, what I notice when it comes to these things about Chris Rock, stuff like that, in either way you see it, the fact that he stand up and couldn't just compose himself smack Chris Rock, it looked very bad. Even if you were in favor of doing so, right? Even if you were in favor of just Will Smith standing up and beat, beat on Chris Rock, 
I could tell you, you as a female, you will never date a, like, a guy like that because he's very emotional. You're not even attracted to that um, in the first place. You just want to go against the trend of masculinity, right? So the other thing is that when it comes when it comes to the emotion aspect of people seeing a video and all of a sudden they are triggered because of the video uh, says something, right? Or it, it has a color, right? The problem is that it comes down to the end of the line, which is just going to be self-destruction. When self-destruction happens, right, it's up to now to the other side to say, okay, you got to destroy this stuff, right? Now in command, now I know what to do here. And now it's not going to be 50-50. Now we're going to go back to the table. It's going to be 90-10. 90 percent for me, a 10%. That's what happened with, with things get collapsed, right? If you have a city in the United States go bankrupt, you always have some of conservatives just being elected. Well, that means that now we're in the table. Well, now we're not 50-50. Now we're 90% and you've got 10-10 and you have to be quiet. I, That's just going to happen. I like using the percentage thing because I kind of I kind of had this this conversation with me, me chica colombiana, where yeah. I said, I go six, nice 60, 40 is how it, you know, man, woman split. And then I was talking to her, I go, you know, uh, I'm eventually going to push this up to a 70, 30. And she goes, mm -hmm. what? And I, she goes, no, no. And I go, yeah, you know, 80, 20. And she goes, no. <laughs> and I go, yeah, you know, I'm going to get it I'm up sorry. there. She goes, no, 60, 60, 40 is bueno. And I go, eh, I know, but I'm going to, I'm going to, she goes, no. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, 60, 40 is good. She goes, 60, 40. And I go, yeah, but you know, I'm gonna eventually get more. And she's like, yeah. no, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like slowly, Little by little, I'm, I'm like American settlers on the plane. I'm going to encroach upon your, your Indian territory through yeah, manifest slowly. destiny. <laughs> yeah, slowly you're going to just get inch by inch. Yeah. But, but I was like, even I just, and she laughed, but it was, I was like, you know, obviously that's also going to come from her allowing me to do that. Yeah, I, mm. I can't take it without her wanting me to take it. Yeah, that, that's right? another... That's I gotta point. inspire that within it. Yeah. The the thing about um, I think there's a, there's a purpose for trying to get what is rational, emotional, emotional, rational, and I think it's clear to just great and make sure that sides are great, right? There's not a structure, and I think it's just a self-destructive behavior because we have a very good, right? We we're not that bad. We have we have lights, we have electricity, we have water, we have food. It's not that bad. No, not but right now. Not right now. That's a good point. Not right now. But when it comes down to it, right? Whoever is stronger in the long run, it's gonna take over. It's, and you don't, it's not, it, it doesn't have to go back where we have to go to caveman or 1940s. Just simply a, a 2008 depression, right? 2008 depression, everything goes down, it maybe goes worse. Those that have the power to just buy property, stuff like that, are the ones that are going to set up the lines. It's, and you have to be willing to just say to that. Yes, to dude, that. yeah. You're, I, was just, I was just telling something. About, I was just telling a friend of mine this. I go, I know the world is looking frightening mm. for what's coming, right? Yeah. Like we, the president has said there's going to be food shortages. And I was just at the store and I couldn't find any milk. So maybe there were certain products I couldn't find. So maybe it's starting. Groceries are insanely expensive. Gas is insanely expensive. Expensive, mm -hmm. excuse me. Housing is getting more expensive. There's less property. Homes are more expensive. It's not looking good. Inflation is coming. They're blaming it on Russia. It's not. It's our own elites who fucked it up. But anyway, that's happening. It's gonna be a good time to be a man, though. Okay, because mm -hmm. you know because. It didn't take all. It took was the threat of a potential war with Russia. For women to say, I belong in the kitchen. I'm not getting drafted. And yeah. it doesn't have to get much worse for them to be like, hey, all that shit I was talking, I'm a I'm a I'm good. I just want to be safe. I will I will shut the fuck up if you let me feel because they're gonna be like, Oh, I don't wanna be single all of a sudden. And being a dude with a roof over your head, that's gonna it's be gonna real. be valuable. That's gonna be that's gonna be the ten inch dick, okay? The, yeah. Everyone's worried about how big their pecka is. Do you have a water supply, some canned food, and a home to live in? Okay, mm -hmm. that's gonna be very important. Yeah, that's, gonna that's the out. that's the seventy the seventy percent thirty uh, seventy to thirty percent theory, right? It's like I, I don't know if you saw this video where it was like a survival island, and the females have the chicken. 
Yes, and the yes, guys were like, okay, they hey, did men versus hey, women. Yeah, hey, just give me the chicken. We cook it. We just, uh, we just, you know, share it. And the female say, no, we're not gonna do it. We're gonna just take the chicken. And and they thought the guy were gonna come back. The thing is, the guys don't need them. So the girl managed to just go back, and the guy said, okay, it's gonna be seventy thirty. When they come back, it's not gonna be fifty fifty to sixty four. It's gonna be seventy thirty. That's what happened. Because when you, there's a reason. There's a reason why the Manosphere, um, the Red Pill community, uh, some of these old guys are popping, right? Because it's a counterculture for the results that we got from 60 years. There's, there's a reason this is not an accident that just came from out of the blue. A guy wanted to just make money. Just No, it's a reason for it, right? And I think because we saw all this philosophy just get through everything, Mike. When I say through everything, it's through everything, man. DC, Marvels, Hollywood, uh, every every company that you see around it has this man for third or four way feminism, man. They just get to a point that, that you have to just you hit the hammer and just say, wait, we have to stop this thing. We yeah. cannot just allow this thing. And in the end, on the wrong run, we've been civil. This is the point. We we've been civil now, but if it comes down to power, men can just stop their finger, and just end this problem very quick. But we don't want to get to that point, right? We want to be civil about it. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, well, it's also it's also a a segment of of I don't know. I'm trying to figure out who to who to throw this on, but we'll say our politicians or our corporate oligarchs who yes. are very fond of pushing this idea because mm-hmm. number one, it it fucks up the family structure, right? Yeah. Which, they want they want us to be more easily controlled because a strong family is the basis of a civilization. So it fucks up family structure, but also it puts women in the workplace so they have more money to spend on consumeristic shit because women spend more money shopping than men do. And also it allows children to then be taught by schools instead of homeschooled. The woman is in a home with the kids. Both, mm. both pa- or the man, both parents are working nonstop. The kids are being taught by, uh, I don't know, my friend likes to call them the purple head people eaters. You know, uh, you know what I'm taught? The teacher yeah. who has half her head shaved and it's purple and green and pink and 18 piercings, which doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. You know, it isn't in and of itself. But the problem is, is that there's a personality type that goes along with it. And it's not somebody I would want teaching my mm-hmm. four-year-old if I had the option. I mean, you have also, you have the females going to the workforce, which back then you, the female will be the one teaching the culture. So now mama's just out of the workforce. She's getting, she's going back home tired. You think she will have the same energy you're spending with the kids? No, no, like nah, it, it's tough. It's tough. Um, the girl I'm talking to, she's got to work a career to stay afloat, as we all do in this world. And she has, she can be a good cook, but she works such crazy long hours. She doesn't always have time. No. And actually, funny thing, um, I didn't know this until I just saw a tweet about it, but. It was, it was from a progressive woman who tweeted and said, hey, look, I'm not anti-vax. I'll still get all, all my boosters, but I'm having really bad menstrual problems mm. from the vaccine and the booster. And all these women were like, I'm not anti-vax. Like, it's so weird that they have to say this. this disqualify themselves. Disqualify. Look, and they were all said the same thing. I would still do it. I'm not one of the bad people, mm. but I'm also, one woman wrote, I had a 90-day period. And I asked a woman I know, and I go, hey, did you have any problems? And she goes, yeah, I did. I didn't have my period for three months. And I go, what? And then I started asking all this. And this has been like, this is the, 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 like, the thing. And they're like, well, we can't talk about it because, you know, the yeah. anti-vaxxers or people who wouldn't get vaccinated said that this would sterilize you. All right. Yeah. Now, my, one of my family members, she was pregnant. And she had a no, a pre. Uh, how do they call it? Pre. Uh, a preemie, baby came out too soon. Too soon, bro. Yeah, preemie baby. Like like two two months before her due date, Shit, and she got the three backs, bro. And so that kind of. And just was... when you when you start putting the dots together, right? I I have no vaccines in my body, bro, and that feels amazing. Yeah, I feel I go fun out, too. 
I've been around the country. I've been, you know, I moved from New York all the way to Wisconsin in a, in a truck. Super fine. Went to Puerto Rico a couple of times. Super fine. But I would just do the argument that it's more a religion's culty feeling to it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like how people will say that they're queer, even though they're sexually straight. Queer means you're a cultural, it involves cultural yeah. politics. Yeah. It's an identity beyond just sexuality. Yeah. yeah, there's an absence of spirituality, but that absence is being replaced by hundreds of different things. Dude. Hundreds of different things, bro. I don't, like, people act like calling out infertility makes you a mm. conspiracy theorist. So I was looking up, I'm going to do a solo podcast. I'm looking up articles to talk about. There's a diabetes medication that was causing sterility in like 30% of men who had taken it. Okay. Well, I didn't know that, bro. It was, it was like severely reducing sperm counts. I just watched a documentary on birth control. And it's crazy that I never knew how birth control worked for a woman. But it completely fucks up a woman's system. Birth con and there's been so many birth controls that they've released that had horrible effects they actually, one of the first birth controls they experimented on in Puerto Rico, they found a small town in Puerto Rico and they experimented on these women and it made some of them sterile. And, Damn, bro. and they didn't find out, they did this in the sixties. They didn't find out till like the late eighties and some of them sued and they got a small amount of money, but this, there've been so many different insertive birth controls there was one that looked like a, a fishing lure that that bacteria would come up into the vagina and women became sterile it destroyed their uterine lining but all of these different birth controls they force estrogen into the body they fuck up a woman's hormones they make her more emotional than she already needs to be cause mood swings and they not only that but they they trick her body into thinking that it's pregnant I didn't know that's how that's worked. That is interesting. So it, it, it does trick their mind because it makes sense because they don't having a period, right? So so it's, what it's, it yeah. So it what it does is it 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 tells it forces uh like estrogen, synthetic estrogen, and it tells yeah. the the body that it's currently pregnant. So imagine mm -hmm. women are taking a pill like that's tricking their body into thinking they're pregnant. For maybe yeah. two fucking decades, and then they wonder why they can't get pregnant after. That's interesting. Well, the IUD, what the IUD does, is it inflames their fucking uterus. So the uterus goes. There's a foreign object inside of me. Yeah. I'm gonna like inflame and puff up, and therefore, if 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 you as a guy come in a woman, though there are white blood cells there because they think it's an infection and they eat the sperm. Yeah. So oh. it's so dude like. I, when I went to go see my lady friend in Colombia, she took birth control and she had, pro she kept bleeding. And I was like, look, just don't take it. Like, well, I'll use like, as much as I hate condoms, I will use, I'm not going to, I don't want a woman to fuck her body up just for sex with me. Like, I'm not, I'm not yeah. that much of a, I'm not as I, this shit's like, is done enough. Like we keep, I, I've always asked this question. Why is it? that you know i think you you like me our parents grew up in big families right yeah they were and but now you talk to people and they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to get pregnant like what happened uh like, one one friend of mine he spent like thirty thousand dollars in one of them that's why just doing that ibf whatever they call it um it it is you know what's crazy man And we always discuss this about what the last generation did good and what the last generation did bad. And I think they thought that if both of us have jobs, we can have more resources, but then we're going to have a smaller family. Yeah, but then back then, yeah, but back then, the only thing they have was just one parent bring the income. And then the family have, they were like 10 or 15. So basically, you're putting yourself in a situation, and I know right now, close families, that their kids are not going to have kids. So that means that lineage itself, it just destroys. It's going to be, it's going to be, that's it for that lineage. Yeah. So now the problem is you have estrogen in the water. In the water. You have estrogen in food. 
a lot of people are consuming less meat, especially red meat, that which give you um, a higher percentage to to have more sperm. And in the case of a female, uh, more fertile. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Eat your fucking yeah. protein, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> so you eat eggs and, and red meat, your f- fertility rate increase, right? And of course, for the guy, it will be the same. They have to cut the estrogen. Uh, again, I'm not. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a medical guy. I'm just from what I, I know so far. And what happened is that if you have a society now going vegan on top of it, bro, eating soy and tofu and all that stuff, and you see a lot of these guys that eat a lot of soy milk and stuff like that, they look fragile, man. Like you can literally shake their hand and just hear their bones just cracking. Well. Yeah. Ron, Ron White is a comedian who has a very good joke. And he says, have you ever met a healthy vegetarian? Like you ever met a vegan and you look at him and you go, this guy looks like, like, you know, he could, uh, I don't know, be in a strongman competition, which is <laughs> yeah. just like a buff dude. You know, you never meet a guy who's a lumberjack and you go, ah, and he's like, you're like, what do you eat? And he goes, oh, I have a kale salad. And you're like, dude, I'm not <laughs> saying on, bro, don't yeah. have, don't mix it in there. You know, eat your vegetables, motherfucker. But you know, put some steak in there too. Put oh, some tuna bro, in there. Yeah, and you can feel it, man. When if you go, um, I never been vegan, thank God. But uh, oh my God, vegans send an attack in the comment section. Um, <laughs> so in my case, right, I do bodybuilding, right, and I notice looking if I'm swole. Vegan, by the way, you getting uh, like, I, I, like I'm really <laughs> like when 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 you and I were working out together, we were. You know, I was keeping up behind you, and yeah, then I yeah. let myself go after COVID. And <laughs> stayed on. And I just, I just, I just kept going, bro. I know. So I keep my protein, man, and I know when my protein steak is low, it's it's not happening. It's not happening, bro. It's just, I can't lift the same weight. Um, that's in my experience. So I need to just eat my red meats and and you know and white meat. Dude, you know what's funny is I I was doing some work through my union hall again. And I was doing some heavy like lifting where just re- repetitive exercise of pulling steel cables up to a ceiling. Yeah. So it's, it's in my, so I'm squatting down, I'm using my legs, I'm using my back. And you know, it was, it was a workout again. It was like, I was lifting weights. Yeah. And then that fucking, that horn ball in me that need to like, I got to fucking hold someone down and hump them. It came back. Cause I used to get that all the time working out. And I was like, dude, it's amazing how much. Yeah, yeah eat a donut diet, and see what happens. Yo, eat a donut and see what happens. Proper diet and workout affects yeah. your testosterone levels. Yeah. If you get a donut, you want to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Because insulin, the insulin spike. Pablo, right? I, I, ate, I bought a box of cereal. I never eat cereal. I never eat processed shit anymore. But it was said Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Lucky Charms mixed. Those were my two post- favorites. <laughs> dude, I have been shitting for two you, days. I, I have the shit. <laughs> From cereal, I didn't. I, I was like, you would think I was eating Taco Bell the way my stomach is handling this cereal. And I was like, dude, what? I was like, I didn't. I, 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 at first, I was like, is it me? And I go, no, my mm-hmm. body just, I, I, I've been, I eat fruit and yogurt and honey every day for breakfast. Mm-hmm. And like the night before, I had lamb, hummus, olives, and uh, olive oil on yeah. on pita bread with feta cheese and i was like oh i'm just eating real food so when i put something in there that came from a factory my stomach is like dude i'm you feel out it. yeah you feel I'm, it i'm out i'm out you're on yeah. your own fuck face mm-hmm. <laughs> the good thing is and this is a good food oysters any family of oysters there's good for testosterone and good source of protein i heard that they're a pretty good aphrodisiac i never believed it but other people have been telling me that yeah and um that's in my case, right? And every time that I eat oysters and clams and stuff like that, I feel good. Every time that I put a burger, donut, and I'm I'm not a burger or donut guy, but when I when I eat it, I feel it. I feel like the wobbly thing coming in, like wait, mm-hmm. like oh my god, I might just get taken up. It's just the insulin. The insulin just really spiking. Now imagine yourself eating that stuff for every day, bro. Well, you know what it also is is that in the U.S. We get big portions, but our sometimes, but our mm. portions, the the shitty thing is very big. Right. So right. so every culture has their filler food. Latin and Asian cultures have their rice. 
Yeah. Right. Um, my Irish culture has a potato. Potato. Um, so the Italians and Chinese kind of have well, pa- pasta as well. Pasta. But there's a high cheap carbohydrate food that French have their bread that goes along with your meat or whatever your main thing is. And if you go to a restaurant in the US, you get a small hamburger and then a bunch of French fries. Whereas mm-hmm. when I was in Colombia, you would get like, a, I would get a, a hamburguesa and it would be huge, tons of meat. And, you know, and then I would get a, like 10 French fries. So it, I would get, so I'm eating way more protein and like and avocado and just a small amount of carbohydrates. Yeah. Also the, the big difference is that the meat I was eating, like what I found and I, Puerto Rico is like this to a certain degree, I think a lot of Latin America, but I would leave the city. I would be in Medellin and I would just walk up a hill. There's no suburbs. It's just bam. Like I was literally just, just in the fucking city. And now I'm in a cow farm. Like, dude, I hiked mm. from, you know, I'm the girl I'm staying with. I hiked from her, from her house. And I, next thing I know I'm in fucking, I'm lost in cow farms. And next thing I know I'm in the jungle and there's mm-hmm. panthers up there. There's signs being like, be careful of the fucking panthers. So the meat is fresh. It didn't come from a thousand miles away. They chopped it up and sent it right there. Yeah. So you don't have you don't to worry know. about. Yeah. You don't even know. Yeah. You don't even know what uh, they're putting in. That's that's another thing. And that's why when when you eat a lot of fast food, all all those things that they're putting in your meat, you will feel it right away. I, I don't eat fast food at all. I'm, no, it kills me, dude. It ruins yeah. me. It hurts me. It, you will feel it right away. You probably if you eat five food every day for a month, you probably have a heart attack. You know, yeah, you really have a heart attack. But you know, thank God I don't. we I just cook here, and sometimes I just go to a diner. That's it. So I I cook all the time. I actually don't even like eating out anymore. I love cooking mm-hmm. at home. But so you're on your you're gonna be on your second baby, right? Yeah. Your um fiance is pregnant now. Mm-hmm. So what? Will you, getting will you married? I'm getting married August 27th. You're invited. Oh, th- congratulations, dude. And you're invited. I'm coming. Yeah. Have have you um what do I mean to say? Have you have you guys been very specific about what she's eating while she's yes. pregnant? Yes. I put the rules, right? Yeah. No processed food. Mm-hmm. Right, I will give her some benefit of the doubt once a week. You can eat your potato chips, you can eat your donut. That's it. But most of the time, no processed food. Mm-hmm. No processed food. You have to eat what we what we consume, what we're cooking. If we go to a diner, right, you eat good food, but you don't eat processed sugar later. So you have to be very careful because when they're pregnant, they want to eat the world. Dude, I, I, you have to put, you have to put the line because what happened is you have to think about what is going to happen after she could give birth. It's 30 pounds that she had to lose now. Yeah. I mean, just to speak. not even that, only that, but for the sake of the baby, because yeah. so most when, when deformities happen, like I can, we as adults can handle certain shit in our body obviously mm-hmm. plastics are bad for us. I try and read when I go to the store and I buy honey, I won't get it in a plastic bottle. I only get mm-hmm. it in glass bottle. I, I do my best to get things in glass bottles. I avoid plastics at all costs because the plastics break down. They get in your food, you get in your body, yeah. you fuck up, especially your testosterone and they get in your liver, they get in your kidneys. I was talking to a friend of mine who's pregnant and uh, she's like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go grab a, a iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. And I was like, I was like, look, I can't not say something to you. Like you, you shouldn't be drinking. I, 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 even, I know that a woman can have a certain amount of caffeine, but you don't, caffeine is a drug and you mm-hmm. don't want to be crushing a fucking large iced coffee when you're pregnant. It's mm-hmm. just, it's not good for the baby. Mm-hmm. That, that's like stress. Also stress. If you are stressing yourself, mm-hmm. like that's why you like it's it's our job to take care of them when they're pregnant, mm-hmm. right? That's our job as men. Because if she's stressed out, 
that's going to hurt her, her. The stress is huge on, 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 a, on all of us any day. But when you get a fucking little embryo in you, it's even worse. Yeah. Now we do consume coffee, but it's very light. I don't like heavy coffee. And we yeah. only do like one or two because there's a certain milligrams that she can drink, right? But yeah, we yeah. don't drink Starbucks coffee. She cannot drink that. She cannot drink the Dunkin' Donut coffee. Oh, none of that stuff. That's Has shitty be, coffee anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not only like that, you, all of a sudden you are hallucinating after that. So it's, it's yeah. not even worth it. Uh, I, I'm not a, I'm a drunk, uh, I'm a coffee lover, but all my coffees is just sometimes mixed up with decaf. Because yeah. I just want that little col color in it, right? Yeah. I got a caffeine mostly, problem. Yeah. Bad I love one, coffee, dude. but it's always light roasted, man, because I know I just, just like light roasted. I don't even know uh, uh, heavy coffee. Now, the thing is, she has to work out. She worked out at least three to four times a week. She has to work out. She has to work out. Why is that? Because the, the longer the pregnancy, the more weaker your body gets. But she had to have a strong body. And she had to, mm. the thing is, as soon as you give that baby, I'm waiting for that 130 again. She has to go back to 130. You see what I'm saying? I'm not expecting 150, 160. Oh, okay, one to fit now. You have to go back to 130. Because you have to think that I want to have another kid. Yeah. Afterward. But you have to be in 125, 130. And it is unhealthy for females to just keep birth and just keep that 160, bro. It's very unhealthy. Well, a lot of that is, as I've said, as I was mm. saying before, like one of the reasons women have higher issues with with emo with emotional issues and issues with weight is from their fucking birth control. Right. Yeah. Like it's not. It's just not fucking good. It just isn't. Um, it is what it is. You know, pull out, use condoms, have kids, have kids like we used to. Bro, you have but, kids, man. You have you know, kids. Just, just fucking. I don't know. Just, just find a girl you you don't mind if she comes to you one day and goes, "I'm pregnant." Yeah. All right, yeah. that's the best then, advice. I think. You not should. only that, you can enjoy your sex, man. After you, yeah. your, your woman is too pregnant, after what you don't have to worry about. Okay, she's pregnant. What what am I gonna do? Then you enjoy your sex, man. You know, just make sure that you you as a man, you keeping things well controlled. Don't let it go overboard, right? Don't because what happened is. There's no difference in my experience. There's no difference from a female woman pregnant and she's not pregnant. What do you mean? She's sexually? Not... Sexually is one thing, but behaviors. Do you, so you don't you think know? that she acts more emotional or? If she's like acting that? emotional, right? It's her responsibility to keep her composure, right? She has to, because you can, you can do the same. You can, you can say the same excuse. Everything is stressing me out and outside. So that means because stressing me out, should just act like a fool? No, man, that's not how it works. You're pregnant. You're in an emotional state. You have, your responsibility is inside this house just to keep yourself composed. There's no difference when you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. Because what happens is if you allow those behaviors to come, don't expect them to just go to away. Disappear. They disappear because most of the time, they, that's not the case. What happens is the behaviors are learned. There's no boundary. After the pregnancy... Those behaviors stay. So your job as a man is just remind her that hey, even though you're pregnant, I understand you're going to all emotional um, torm turmoil or whatever. You have to keep your comp yourself composed. Not only that, for yourself and for your family. See, now it's not about you. That's about the other girl, myself, everyone in here in the house. Because if I have a responsibility to keep myself composed from everything that's going on out in the world. I'm not bringing that to a home. Your responsibility is to make sure that when I come home, right, there's peace in it. That's, that's a key to any relationship, dude, is, yeah. uh, is that you don't bring your bullshit fucking home with no. you. Yeah, imagine, bro. See, yeah. You imagine? <laughs> bro, you're doing that as this favor to your family, man. Yeah, you are. I, I mean, I think that's, um, that's, that's a fundamental issue of being a decent person. And especially yeah. a decent parent and, and husband and man is that regardless of whether or not your work is fucking you up, you know, you might feel humiliated at work or emasculated. Mm -hmm. You got to fucking check that shit when you walk in the house because it's mm -hmm. not your wife's job and it's not your kid's job to deal with it. Oh, I know yeah. if you want to sit down and be like, hey, can I, mm -hmm. uh, man, I got to blow off some steam. I want to talk to you about something that happened at work. That's yeah. fine. But if you come in and you're all fucking grumpy, and you want to take out your shit on your wife and kids, 
and you're just a weak ass fucking dude. Super weak, bro. And you're Super a, a weak. failure as a man. Yeah, you you're not even a man. You're a loser, man. A lot of time, bro. This is exactly you're what complete, it is. Yeah, a complete loser. Yeah, you have to, and that's just uh, where the stoic uh, philosophy comes in, right? So I mean, the world by itself is hard. We understand. The that. Yeah, it's it's hard, but your job is to to figure out how can you just go through another day, right? While you don't lose yourself. Yeah, if you lose yourself while you're going through your day, right? There's a problem. And you have to figure out what problem is. You might have issues with your father. You have my issue with your brother. You might have issues with your mom. You might have issues with yourself. Something that happens years ago, you haven't resolved those issues. But you have to come with your senses. In that way, whoever is following you, right, can see you as a great leader, right? Because when you're in your house, I don't care what feminists say. I don't care what people say. The 50 50, you know, they always are going to look at you for direction. Always. Yes. You, and you, you need to be. Yeah. When, and that's why I, I like I said, when mm. the world gets crazy, it's not even just, it doesn't have to be like there's cannibals outside where she's, you're going to come in here and live with me and suck my dick if you want to be safe. It's, it's just a simple, the world is incredibly stressful. And you are going to look to me to be a rock. You know, like when, when shit gets crazy and I've been this for people, you know, when, when we're in a, a, a crazy situation and I keep my cool, like the worst thing you can do is to lose your head when, you know, times get, when you're in a really stressful or chaotic situation mm -hmm. is, I mean, that's, that's the whole purpose of the military and special forces training is to train you how to operate under extreme stress. Mm. Okay, something, there's bombs going off, whatever. Or, you know, the world is just going crazy. And guess what? Your wife and kids are going to look to you and, and they're going to think, and if you were running around like a chicken with his head cut off, then everyone's fucked. That's why, Damn, whether we like it or not, our, our executive branch, your, whether that be a monarchy, a king, or a president, or a prime minister, becomes in essence a the so when when uh u.s troops would talk with native americans on the plains they would refer to the the u.s president as the great father the great that's interesting in, in essence it is it, it's a patriarchal figure and you know when you look i, I know no one is ever going to be pleased with the president ever but you want them to at least like a lot of people i know kind of like they want some of them say it outright and some of them will like say it in a roundabout way they're like like i didn't like trump but at least there was something about him that was like he, he had a go goofy strong man thing all right where where you know you didn't expect him to take shit from someone yeah whereas well, you Joe yeah. feels like a fucking invalid and it doesn't make you feel safe. Would you like to complain to a strong dad or to a weak dad? dad? And at least with a, at least if you complain to a strong dad, you know at the end of the day he's doing it because he loves you. When you complain to a weak dad, bro, you are alone in the wolf, man. You're alone, you're alone in the jungle, man. Mm. See? And that's what's happening now. At least with Trump, not a lot of people like them. Mm? And you, you can say a, a lot about things, but, you know, at least you knew that, you know, if someone wanted to come here to just, you know, do the right, the wrong thing, he's ready. He's ready. He was ready. Have you ever been with a woman who had a, a soft father? Yep. They crave boundaries. boundaries. They crave structure and order because they never got it growing up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's the alternative is abusive dad. Or, you know, but, but I just mean like, a, you know, there's the dad who's like a strong man who's like, look, this is what you can and can't do as my daughter. Mm. You know, it is what it is. Mm. And I'm here and I'm going to stand up for you. And then there's the very super whatever emotional, the hell you want. soft dad. I've been yeah. with women like that. And it, they're like, they're constantly trying to make me check them. Yeah. And it's like. A lot of check tests. Yes. Yes. A lot of check tests. Go, yeah. This is too yeah. much. And this is an interesting topic, either or, either with the one that's a strong father and either with a weak father, mind you, you need to have the same frame. 
Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't change. Same frame it doesn't change you. because what happened is um, the one with the strong father, she always gonna check you if you are equally or stronger than her father, right? Mm -hmm. Now the weak one, she will test you to see right what kind of man are you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So either or your boundary has to be settled. So when you look at straight in her eyes, you know that there's no difference whether you're here or here, right? Whether you bounce around, there's no nothing changed, right? And if you manage to just get the one with the weak father to you replace her image as the male, right? You win the battle. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, that's the harder one because you need to have a stronger frame. Yeah. Yeah, you need to have a stronger frame for that one. Now, this, this one, she always going to touch you just to make sure that she is with a strong man where she want to make sure that because I was raised with a strong man, my dad teach, taught me how to be with a strong man. I want to make sure that he's at least as equal mm -hmm. to that characteristic, right? So that's why you always have to keep that frame strong, 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 strong. It never ends. It never ends. It should never end. No, a lot of guys, and, and I think that's what people need to learn about. Yeah. That's just, that's a metaphor for life in and of itself. Yeah. In that we all think that at a certain point you get your, to your retirement where life is no longer tough and everything is, I'm on the mountaintop. No, there's never not a challenge. Yeah. There's always something to overcome. The, the, the trail doesn't end. You don't you keep hiking up the mountain of life and guess there's no fucking top. You keep, things might get better. Like, I'm not saying that like, I'm not saying that in a pessimistic way. I'm just saying that life is meant to test you. You're not meant to get soft, mm. but you're not. And I see that in a lot of guys who reach a certain age and they're just throwing the towel and become pudgy fucking. It, they just, I go, dude, I used to look up to you. And so you keep, keep going keep going, keep going. And you know, it's, yeah, that's a good point, man. When they, and this happens a lot with the 2010s and 2011s pick up artist movement where a lot movement? of guys, the pick up artists, the POAs, um, yeah, movement, yeah, yeah. the dating coaching. So a lot of these guys, they would just learn these ta tactics just to just get with one woman, bro. But what happened is as soon as we, they will get with one woman, they will stop. They will stop working on themselves so when you go back to just talk to them you're like bro what happened to you man what's going on here the, what the hell is going on here the pua it's funny i was just looking at videos um i was i was gonna uh i know someone who works for a specific pickup artist and so i was looking at stuff because i was i heard some there's they're kind of like die some some tiktok videos are making fun of or dissecting pickup artists and it reminded me that some of their techniques work. They do, mm -hmm. but they work in that they get you a woman's number, but they don't necessarily, they don't work, always work at closing the deal. May, mm -hmm. and, and some might, might, maybe you do get this, fuck them, but they don't work for maintaining manhood in a relationship. That's no, something never. internal because yeah. a pickup artist, it, it's trickery. You're using, um, you know, illusions, it's a magician, smoke and mirrors. But at the end of the day, in order to maintain a relationship, you can't, you can't technique your way through it. You, you either are who you are and, and you emanate that or you're not. Yeah. Right. So you either, it, 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 the deeper thing has to come from an internal authenticity of who are you as a man? Mm -hmm. Am I, am I who I say I am? Yes. Do I you know, evoke an emotion in this person to cause them to want to be with me? Mm -hmm. And the, the funny part is uh, that that's what happens. If you don't have a strong inner game, that's why the chest test is very important. They constantly the chest test. This, that's the reason she's chest testing you because she want to make sure that you're that type of guy that you convey to be. Huh? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're that type of guy, I will submit to if you're not that type of guy, I'm going to keep shit testing you on to make you weak and then make you the reason why, as a female, I made my bad decisions. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's why when you do pick up artists, I did pick up artists for years. Right? And I would just get numbers, man. But my close rate was bad, bro. When I say bad, I would just uh, I would just get 100 numbers and just close one. It was bad, bro. 
But then I started working more in the inner game. Oh, maybe, maybe something with me, bro. And th that's when things start changing a little bit, right? That well, things start making sense. Pickup Odyssey works when you're a boy still, when you, before you really come into manhood, because what it does is it allows you to get a woman's attention without having to improve on yourself. It's, it's a shortcut. All right. I'm going to get this woman's attention, but I haven't become a better guy. I haven't gotten physically and mentally and spiritually healthy. I haven't taken accountability for myself because once you do all that stuff and you become someone that people want to be around, it's just naturally, it's going to yeah. happen. All right. You, you'll just do it in conversation just by talking to them mm. because you're yeah. secure in who you are mm. and you're not that, you know, we all know when we meet someone who isn't secure in who they are and who might have self-hatred or is uncomfortable in their own skin. And their uncomfortability about themselves makes you feel uncomfortable when you're around them. Right, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, how much do you can carry a mask, right? On the, on the people see who you are for, for what you really are. And that comes a lot, that comes a lot in back in the early 2000s. The main problem with a lot of pickup artists were, were that even though they were getting laid with a lot of females, they would still go to depression because a lot of the problems were not being dealt with. Yeah. Right? Who's the who's the guy with the big fucking hat? Was that Mystery? Mystery, Mystery. Mystery was no tour. I, I, I used to watch his show. And then yeah. I read Neil Strauss's book, The Game. The Game, yeah. And he kind of detailed how this guy would go into these bouts of intense depression because of childhood mm -hmm. trauma that he was not working on. And mm -hmm. what I would honestly love to see is like a here and I want to see what happened to all those old, the original pickup artists. They're still around. Some of them, some of them has gone Orthodox Christianity. Some of them has just gone to the manosphere. Some of them. What, uh, yeah. What's the manosphere? Manosphere is the, the equivalent movement uh, exposing the, the real, um, female nature right knowing that they have programmings right mm -hmm. knowing that they always uh, they will never take down right they always go through their emotions right the, the logical side is not as strong as their emotional side right their emotional side so there's some there was always a taboo regarding female nature so the manifest what has done is take all these 60 years of feminism and brought it to light things that people already knew about it but they were not secure to talk about it because they were not aware the manifest just put it all together red pill pickup artists dating and all put it together right into one ball that's the manosphere right make sense hmm. all right yeah so that's the case it's they, like they, uh it's like mixed martial arts for mixed martial arts basically yeah. mixed mixed yeah. dealing with women yeah <laughs> you know as a male you know you can develop some skill to just get women right but why is that? Why certain words just trigger certain emotions or certain things for females? That's why is it that when you have a woman, that all the females they have, uh, you know, uh, attraction to you all of a sudden you're pre-selected, right? Why is that? Why is it that females always go want to date the same or or higher, or a guys always it's okay dating down? All those things were not discussed until a couple of years uh, entering the the 2015 ish. Right, they're all coming together, and also the fact that why is it that eighty percent of the divorce are just initiated by females, and the the main reason is just economic economically factors. Uh yeah. You know uh, time and time again, what I've heard is you know he became a bitch. Yeah. You know he became, and it it it's it's tough. I I don't even like it is your responsibility as a dude, but I've taught you know how often you're a guy. You're working double shifts. You're working, you know, third shift. You're exhausted. You don't even, you don't have the energy to come home and fuck your wife. You, you, you know, you're eating, so you start eating bad food. You know, you're getting these bad habits and you're beat down. You're working 60 hours a week, but you don't even have enough money to buy a home, right? Like you, you, if this was, you know, you, your grandfather's generation, you, you work in how much you work you would have two fucking houses. But the value of what we get paid has dropped. The value of the US dollar has dropped. Uh, the value of our products is massively inflated. So 
instead of you being able to work 40 hours a week and support a family of seven while your wife stays home and you can come home and not be completely destroyed. Mm-hmm. No, you're working 60 hours a week and you come home and she doesn't respect you because damn bro, you that's a good fully, point. You, that's a good point. Which I also feel is intentional. It is part of the subterfuge of wrecking the American family or any global families, not just American. Is that it's everywhere, bro? It's everywhere. It's in the Western world, now it's in Asia. You know that the first pre- first elected president of South Korea. It, it was the first anti-feminist president in the entire world. You know that, right? Really? The South Korea elected a guy that's an anti-feminist. That they, he, he want to abolish a lot of feminist programs. It's coming around. But the thing is that they were deliberative in their message, right? Instead of just, you know, sliding to the cracks, they were deliberate, man. Uh, this is what we're going to do. So what? You, this, the thing is that there's a reason we, we praise heroes, we, we praise courage because it's come from a place that is hard to find can you have courage to say you know what this is my only opinion and whatever people say i'm going to stick with it now in the street now in front of millions of people how easy is that it's very hard to do that's why courage between men is appreciated that's what guys is willing to open your mouth and say the truth that you're already thinking about is appreciated so i'm i'm a big fan of crazy horse who was a Lakota, mm. Lakota Indian chief. And I've listened to several podcasts about him. And the reason uh, the Lakota respected Crazy Horse so much was because he proved himself in battle continually. Mm. He was willing to sacrifice himself for his tribe. He was courageous when other men were scared. And he was humble about it. He wasn't braggadocious. When everyone come back and talk about, I did this, I killed this many crow, or I killed this many snake uh, tribal members, other tribes, he would come back and he'd, he'd be quiet. And he was humble. But what eventually happened, he wasn't, he was killed by his own people. Damn. No, it was eventually, it wasn't, it wasn't even like the white man who killed him. It wasn't a roundabout way. But eventually what happened is the, the Lakota had a, word for uh so some of the lakota were becoming with what the what they were the other indians called them loafers and what that meant was they hung outside the u.s military camps like fort laramie outside the forts and they would be given annuities which was welfare and they would be given free cattle and free food and they just stopped hunting they stopped being a problem they just sat there and every month would wait for their you know their welfare from you know the u.s federal government which was never what it was supposed to be it was never enough it, the cows were it was always less food less clothing but the, this group and as the u.s government started putting more and more people into reservations they really resented the people who refused to go along with it so crazy who was like I remember there's, there's a story of one time he went to a loafer camp and they go, you have a pistol and a rifle and a spyglass. And he goes, well, I'm a hunter. And they took offense to that. They were like, Oh, well, you know, we, like they got angry because they, they resented him because by staring at this man who refused to, to, to take free shit, to, to like allow himself to become uh, subjugated he was like, I'm a warrior and I'm going to be a warrior till I die. I will never surrender. I will always hunt. I will always live free. Eventually, the people who went to the reservation, they killed him out of damn, resentment bro. because damn, damn. his manhood and his courage would cause the other chiefs. The people looked at the chiefs who, who were like, let's just go to the reservation and we'll give up. And, you know, they looked at them as you're a, you're not a you're a weak man. This, this man, you're not crazy horse, crazy horse will fight to the end and will never be conquered. And they ended up killing him out of, out of anger. Anger and guilt, right? Because, well, it's, dude, think, I I saw a video of a guy wearing a mask and he's flipping out another man in a, in a store, losing it. Fucking put on a mask, put your fucking, and the guy's like, dude, I don't have to. It's not. And finally, a woman comes over and he goes, this motherfucker, he ain't wearing his fucking mask. Who the fuck? And the woman goes, sir, 
it's not a store policy. And he goes, so I don't have to wear a mask. She goes, no. And he rips it off as if like, oh, but it was like, oh, he wasn't one of these like super pro mask people anyway. This was a guy who was just a bitch who mm. put it on and he was mad seeing that other guy who was courageous because he reflected on him. So that's when he ripped it off. And like, dude, when I was younger, if I remember some new kid came to school and I was like, oh, be careful. If you go over there, those kids will bully you. And he's like, I'm, I don't care. I'm not afraid. And he didn't take their shit. I resented him. Mm. I didn't, I didn't think to emulate him. I didn't think I resented his courage because it showed me how little I had. How weak you are. It's yes. like a reflection. So instead of looking at that guy and being like, I could work with him or I could be like him. I was like, fuck him. Fuck him for trying. Mm -hmm. Fuck him. You know, it, it's like when you want, when you have dreams, you want to be successful and you have people that try and tear you down because mm -hmm. they don't believe in themselves. Like this is not the same. This is not the same. This is not the same with people that see other guys being successful with women. Yeah. Haters. It's They're the haters. same thing. They're They're haters. haters. They say them, they see this guy being a little bit roughy, a little bit um, jerky with that female. And they, he, they had, hate that fact that he managed to just pull her and just get her that same night. Isn't that the same thing? Dude, that's why every Hollywood movie, it, which are all written by fucking nerds. Hollywood movies aren't written by, you know, a strong man. It's written by that fucking dweeb who went to Harvard, who never got laid because he never did anything to make a woman want to fuck him. And so now he gets his chance to have revenge. In every Hollywood movie, there's always a, you know, where there's a revenge of a nerd type thing in a college campus. They meet a girl and she's a pretty girl. And even um, Wedding Crashers, right? Owen mm -hmm. Wilson's a loser fucking character. Owen Wilson's character is a fucking loser. I don't care who has to hear it. He's a fucking loser, all right? And you see it in so many movies where the, one, the girl who's gorgeous is dating an alpha guy. He's a jock. Yeah. He's a, you know, he makes lots of money or he's fit or he's confident, but he doesn't fully respect her. And eventually she comes, she goes, oh, this guy sucks. I was wrong the entire time. You know what I want? The goofy fucking loser who couldn't lift 20 pounds. That's what I want. I, it's my, I'm a stupid bitch. I didn't know any better. And that nerd character... He never improves on himself. He doesn't realize, oh, I have nothing to offer women. Women, like women don't want to talk to me because I'm not being a better man. I'm not mm -hmm. improving on myself. I'm not going, I'm not reading every day. I'm not exercising. I'm not eating healthy. I'm not meditating. I'm not praying. Whatever it, you do that makes you a better person, he doesn't do any of that. He just waits for this other guy to fail. Oh, that's and that's a weak, weak, weak position, man. To be weak position, bro. There's a there weak. was a famous runner, and I can't remember his name, but he has there's a quote associated with him where he says, he says, if your option for victory is that you're waiting for the other runner to trip or break his leg, you don't deserve to fucking win. If mm. your if your victory is hoping that the other guy fails, you haven't earned it. You get it by being better than him at his best. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you're not even competing against him. You're competing against you. Now, what, what about the fact that doing that is confronting reality that, you know, is all my fault. The, the reason I'm not in that level is because it's my fault. Yeah. That's why, yeah, that's why they wanted to pull it down. Yeah, they, they want to pull them down because in that way they can... They can say to themselves, see, I was right. It's not worth it. Yeah. And they, the they go, I, yeah, I never should have, I never yeah. should have got buff or learned a new language or became a fun person to be around. Yeah. All right. You know, I just, I didn't change it all. Right. And it's, it's the woman's fault. For, no, you don't have traits that are desirable for a mate. Mm -hmm. So just be better. Just be better. And you don't have to, you don't have to change at co the core of, of who you are as a person, but, but you might have to change some of the tenants depending on how bad off you are. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you just have to be better. Better 1% of the time. That's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, change, it's not that... You can change a lot of things to yourself, right? But can you build on yourself? Mm -hmm. Let's say that that's all you have. I say that you want to build certain things, certain blocks, right? You have to find whether you have a great foundation, right? The way you create a grand, uh, great foundation, you start reading, okay, how strong, how much can you read and just get that information? Or how often do you put that video in the morning to get that positive feedback? That's a great foundation. Now, if you are seeing yourself struggling with that foundation, you might be having issues. Now you have to go deeper into those issues. Now, when you notice what those issues is that those issues happen when you were probably small kid, that's what happened most of the time. Mm -hmm. Now that's when you encounter yourself with the monster. You go down to the abyss and you find yourself down to that deep hole. Mm -hmm. And that's when you say, Pam, bro, I'm very I'm I'm deep into this. Can I get out? Can I confront that monster down there? Can I? Dude. I've so I I've, I've told you I went about my ayahuasca experience and how important it was for me. I I had my saw God moment. I had my, you know, I came back a better person. And and I think it was like a boot camp where I learned how to operate under insane levels of stress. And I've, you know, like I have some friends that are like, look, I can be cynical at times. I definitely can because, you know, I'm, and, and, I, I, and it's my, sometimes I catch myself and I go, you know what, Mike, shut up because you're being a fucking Debbie Downer and no one wants to hear it. Stop being a bitch. And I have to catch, catch, catch myself. But I also like sometimes friends of mine and I, one in particular, who are like, hey, uh, you know, I, I put out a video and uh, it was it was a video that went viral where I talked about you know, hey, we're not hurting Russia by getting rid of porn and social media and uh, video games and, um, you know, shitty movies and junk food. All these things we banned, like our U.S. companies that don't operate. I, that was a video. A lot of people liked it. Some didn't. But I got a friend who like went out of his way to text me and be like, fuck, yo, I just fucking snoozed you. And I go, dude, what's the deal? You know, and he's, he's like, you fucking, oh, Mr. I don't eat bread anymore. And I go, I don't eat bread anymore. It's not good for you. It fucking gives me the shits. <laughs> like, I don't do, what do you want me to do? It hurts my belly. Okay. I get fucking, I, I don't, I don't, I don't do hard drugs anymore outside of an occasional hallucinogen. All right. I don't drink. I don't, I try and avoid a lot of types of processed foods because they genuinely just make me feel sick. And I'll be like, oh, you know, and I get, I get a lot of shit. And I'm like, dude, what are you giving me shit for? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're bad for consuming this shit. Okay. And I feel like you, you, like, I feel like sometimes mm. people interpret that as when I yeah. say I won't do this, they're like, oh, what do you think you're better than me? Or they go, oh, I'm bad for doing this. And I go, no. Okay. If you want to drink, drink. Fucking, I don't care. I'm just saying I don't do that. All right. Oh, uh, and sometimes people get like, you know, they get, they're like, oh, you, you said that, you know, a lot of American food's bad. And I go, a lot of it is most of it is like, I don't know, like, I'm not going to lie to you and say that an enormous amount of the food in our country isn't designed to make us sick. It is. All right. Like the, uh, we have you walked, walk around an American city and go to a tent camp. All right. Damn, that's a strong one, bro. Oh, yeah. Why? And don't act like our society isn't purposely feeding people poison, you know, whether it's legal shit. So antidepressants, SSRI inhibitors, um, things that make you crazy or like we talked about. We talked about. Um, um, like uh, birth control and different things we put in our bodies that fuck us up, whether it be food or legal drugs illegal drugs i'm like dude i'm not i don't like that it is what it is but i'm not going to pretend it isn't that way it doesn't mean that i'm like running around going ah everything is awful no nah, dude like i i like to live but i think i think people see that that way where if you if you say say hey you know that mcdonald's sucks 
it does suck. It's not good for you. It's poison. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bending on that. McDonald's is poison. Fuck you. I don't care. It's poison. And someone who eats McDonald's is going to get mad and go. And I've had to like, learn how to deal with that to, to be like, Oh shit. Like some people are gonna, when they hear you talk about shit that's bad or I feel is bad, they're going to think that I'm personally attacking them. You know what was crazy again, because inside inside their heart they know they can do better and the fact that when you make a move that is to make sure that you get a better outcome in the future they see they see that as damn what if but instead of saying what if they go like you know what i'm gonna do my best to just make sure that he doesn't do it because if he does it and he gets a better result because of it it's my fault now it's my fault so because I don't want it to be my fault, I want to just make sure that I watch him fail. And when he fail, I'm going to be the one pointing my finger towards him and tell him, see, I told you so. See, I was right. Hmm. So those are the, the toxic people, right? Um, toxic people just always trying to just bring you down like that. I think it's all is how you present it, too, because I'm like, I'm very cautious about how I present stuff because I don't want it to come off as as pedantic or self-righteous. Hey, I don't think it's gonna matter, really matter, bro. Yeah. It doesn't matter, bro. They, the closest people that live in your surrounding are going to be the first one that are gonna tell you don't do stuff, don't do this, don't. It's just how it is, man. Let me ask it's, you a question. A do you have a hard, I have a hard time consuming media today. So like movies, video games, stuff like that. TV shows, because so many of them have an underlying woke element to them. Too many. Yeah, like Too it, many. It, 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 it get, it, it'll th I'll stop Too watching many. a show yeah. if, it, if it gets bad. Too, I, I will just quit automatically. And then people are like, oh, well, you don't want to go see. And I'm like, nah, dude, nah. I'm not trying to have. Yeah. And they're like, are oh, you? I'm like, dude, I can't. I can't I'll see close it. it off. You cannot can't unsee not it. see it. But those are seed, right? There's a reason why these things are, right? Because it's like a seed. And don't get me wrong. You go 10 years ago, it's still prevalent, but more settled way. You yeah. cannot see it. But if you go 10 years ago, you see some second and third wave feminism. You didn't notice that that was what happening, but it's just a trend. Now I cannot see it, right? So right now, because of what happened in Disney, I just canceled my uh, Disney subscription. I don't want my daughter to see anything. And I don't want my wife to see anything on that. Right? Yeah, Some I'm, of not, the, uh, I'm not a Disney guy either. They no, because do you know what's their background? Their background is horrendous. You know what's going on there. I'm not going to mention a lot of stuff, but a lot of I'll things going on there. I think they're a bunch of fucking diddlers. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was not it. That was not it, but I'm going to leave it like that. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, think, I'm not saying all of them, but look. There, there's there was, a high, there there's a high probability. That's a higher probability that there's child trafficking. So, yeah, there, so. there, was a, there were about 20 people who got caught at Disney World trafficking kids. Yeah, yeah. And that's not cool, man. And I don't, I'm, I'm not a supporter company that does that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they want to they wanna play... It's like, you know what's crazy? It's like seeing a male feminist. You know, when you see a male feminist, they, you know they did something wrong, bro. They know that they've been sneaking about it. They've been something wrong. It's the same thing. And in my family, I'm a, I'm a, I go to church myself. I go to church every Sunday, right? If I'm practicing certain things, I'm going with it full way. I'm not going to go halfway. And these companies are acting this way. I'm going to just go by the word and I'm not going to support them. At that, I'm not going to do that. If this company is doing that, it's zero support for me. If baseball, I love baseball. If baseball is doing stupid stuff, I'm not going to support them. You know, NBA is doing stupid stuff, I'm not going to support them. Easy as that. And it's like even football. If football is doing stupid stuff, I'm not going to support them. Simple as that. I, I've, I'm not into sports really. And it's, it's also like when I watch my, my friends will watch sports a lot, but then I try and watch them, I'm like, mm -hmm. Dude, why is why can I not watch watch this without a political message being shoved down my throat? Whether it's it's COVID or it's something to do with Russia or it's um, gender, it, there there's always something. Something, man. And I go, dude, I'm just watching them. And obviously, 
the powers that be know what they're doing. Like they're like, hey, we will we will tell you what to fucking think, whether you like it or not, and we'll send it to you in any avenue we can. Yeah. Remember the the school the school problems of the CRT in Virginia? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of schools that were having this problem of CRT. And I was thinking, okay, that's cool. Do your do do the fight. Well, why do you have your kids in a in a school like that, public schools like that? You complaining and whining, but I don't see no 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 action for you. Say, you know what? I'm taking my, my kid out of school and we're gonna homeschool them. So instead of doing that, you go to these bureaucracy, you know, buildings just to complain. You think these people really care about you, man? So this is where where we have to be. We have to be instead of talking about it right we have to be that kind of people that we say you know what we're not supporting this i don't care if they close the school i don't think okay it's only people three people need the school no no i have to take care of my family and that would be getting that, that kid out of school and make sure they get homeschooling now nah, because my family we need two incomes you have to do the sacrifice so you have to do the sacrifice i i i i was thinking about this recently and I feel like there is still, when, when I grew up, we, we acted as if homeschooling your kids was like crazy. That's wrong, yeah. We, we had, oh shit, you don't love your kids. They'll, they'll never get an education at home. I, I didn't get, They were not socialized. That's, that's the that's bullshit, which is bullshit. bullshit yeah. Yeah. Your kids are going to be weird. Oh, I know. And, and like, dude, I was telling a kid about the junior high I used to went to. And it was called the Renaissance Charter School. And there would be gang fights. There were race wars. People would fuck in the hallways. They, these, these kids would be like 11 years old, selling drugs, fucking fighting, stabbing each other in the hallways. Mm -hmm. That's where I went to school, man. I didn't learn shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't do homework. And everyone, so it was, it was a dump. And what I, I, so up until like the industrial revolution, so up until the, the, the 1800s, it, you were responsible for educating your kids. You, you were responsible for teaching your children about life, about morality, about um, mathematics, about how to use money, about how to run a business. You, were, you had to teach your kid. And then what happened is the Industrial Revolution. And people were pushed off their land. All right, It wasn't voluntary that everyone moved to the city. Every country did their own thing where they bought up land and they forced people off their farms and into the city. They became destitute in the city. They went to work in factories. And this is something people forget. The biggest thing about the labor movement, about the unions, was to allow their wives to no longer have to work. Because in the 1800s, oh. you and your wife and your kids were all going to work and Damn, making no bro. money, just like today. Just like today, where a husband and wife work and are still broke, you, your wife, and your fucking five kids all worked and you were still broke, all right? And then there were unions, and they said, no more work for my kids, no more work for my wife. They can stay home. And the whole school thing and the industrial, if a kid wasn't working, it was, we get both parents working, and then we teach the kids to be loyal to us, to the political party, to the state, to the politicians, not to their parents. All right. So when, when the U S conquered native Americans, they sent them to special schools. All right. Um, where they couldn't learn their languages, where they didn't learn their traditions. All right. And this happened. Um, the French did it to the people from Brittany who spoke a different language than them. They were Celtic, the Swedes, the Norwegians and the Finns all did this to the Sami people who lived north of them. All right. The Chinese do it now to the Uyghurs. It's been done. The Russians did it to other, you know, Yupik peoples time and time again, they use state funded schools to teach kids to resent their parents and their culture. Mm -hmm. what, so like the I, Nazi did it though. Nazi Germany did it too. Yeah. And the, yeah, and the communists in the Soviet union and people, yeah. people are very entrenched because of the boomers and you know the greatest generation that that a public school is this amazing thing and it like it isn't because education doesn't guarantee the better life lots of people have college degrees and they don't make shit money oh we have an inflation with that stuff bro we have you know? so many college degrees man and we can that can be another another conversation for another three hours where we have so many college degrees that 
the value right now of a master's degree is not even close to a, a, a high school diploma back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. It's not even that close, right? So now, now you're sending people to these systems, right? And you're stopping their, their job skill, right? To just go to a higher paying jobs. Because in reality, you don't earn more money by a diploma. You earn more money by learning a skill. Exactly. Right? Like you're earning more money. Yeah, experience. You get more. The more you, you work. And you know what's crazy? I was, I was watching Amish this morning. <laughs> Amish families in the United States, bro. Yeah. And these people go to work, bro. As soon as they hit a grade, they go back home. Now we're going to start working. But yeah. when they're 20, 22, they already have mansions as houses. And they already have their own businesses. They have seven or 10 kids. And their wife are happily, happily ever after. And they're okay just providing for the family. But that makes sense. You see what I'm saying? Dude, I've that met... That makes sense. Have you probably met this, but have you ever met someone who went to graduate school and didn't get out of school till they were 28. I've met people who didn't finally finish their schooling to the mid to late twenties. And I'm like, Oh, you are I just still have friends though. You're just I'm now still... hitting a, hitting like the adult job market at yeah. 28 years old and not and in debt and in fucking debt. Damn bro. I met, I have still have friends of mine doing doctor's degree, bro. 33, 34 years old, still doing doctor's degrees. So when they get in to music, the... right? Music, yeah. Switch that. <laughs> not, wish. not in like I'm a doctor, I'm a fix you doctor. No. It's like in music, fucking... which you end up teaching in a small school, private school, because their job, their job from being a music teacher is so small. It's not even worth it. It's it's just a complete inflation of what is not real. Because you need skill. Right now, I'm earning more money because I built a skill. Mm -hmm. It was not even. It's not even close to what I, what I did as uh, as my master's degree. Right, I do sales from home. Yeah, and I earn good money, but that doesn't mean that I did it because I got a master's degree. Nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, it took me a little bit of time to realize that, because when I was in New York, I was working in this private school, where I was earning bro less than two thousand dollars a month. And I was... I, I remember when you were working there. Yeah, bro. You remember those days, man? <laughs> yeah. Golly, bro. Uh, I was... Days of, days of hot, dog and, hot dogs, ramen, soup after the oh, gym. And, bro, and you would God. leave and you'd go to work and then you'd tell me what you made. And I was like, that's a lot of traveling. That's a lot, for, a lot of traveling. A lot of... Fucking bro, money, it's still the 15. They're not... They haven't given me the check. It, it was bad, yeah. bro. But then, you know, I took myself out and just took the risk doing some sales. And, and I went through a lot, bro. Yeah, I, I did Uber Eats. I did a lot of things. Scooter. Pablo, yeah, scooter. Pablo used a Razor scooter to deliver. <laughs> tell them, Mike. Tell them, bro. Tell them, tell them. <laughs> oh, I'll do man. a bathroom Brooklyn. I, I remember when you were, uh, when you first started sales and you were going door to door in the freezing fucking cold, man. Yeah, bro. Oh, dude. But, but I have to humble myself, man. Mm -hmm. I have to humble myself. That was a humbling experience. I would go, I would go to downtown, downtown Brooklyn. 8 p.m. and just do delivery until midnight how to just it, earn, earn hundred dollars. I will earn a hundred dollars. How does it feel being outside the city? Well, you're in Milwaukee, but Milwaukee, you know, not in New York City. It feels amazing, man. It, yeah. it, I miss New York. I'm not gonna lie. I do too. I miss New York because New York was making me a man that I never knew I had him on me. Right? The experience, the li the living experience of daily struggle. I didn't allow them to get me crazy, even though I have a couple of breakdowns. Don't get me wrong. Before I met you, I have breakdowns. Mm -hmm. But that thing didn't stop me to always find out any, any new skills. Remember when I was selling solar, I managed to just go from a one room to a studio with a family, bro. Mm -hmm. So I was getting there, and then I said, you know what? Let me just make the decision to, to now really... I think things are moving. Like let's let's get it going, right? That's when I make the movie. But back then, when I was in Wisconsin, bro, uh, I mean New York, bro, uh, I, it, I, it, uh, it I don't was know, bro. a good boot camp for refining us. But I, what I also realized is that I was spending so much effort just to survive. 
that I didn't have the effort to succeed at the same time. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I was in New York, I, it wasn't until I left that I really, that I learned how to video edit, that I mm -hmm. learned how to make a podcast that I learned. And I, all these things are things I taught myself. I, it wasn't until I left New York city that I didn't have to literally hustle fucking selling weed every fucking night and running from comedy show to comedy show and doing this and doing that just to survive, um, cutting every corner that when I could take a step back and breathe, I could mm. zone in, teach myself, start traveling. I said, so I'm not paying all this money in, in rent and survival. I got to travel. I got to teach myself how to podcast. I taught myself how to edit videos. My social media was trash when I was in New York. You think like I'm in this city, it would be better. I have stuff to film, but I, I was so into just trying to make it through every day and to deal with my excessive loneliness and my need to fuck anything that I could get my hands on to deal with that, that it eventually, that I wasn't, I wasn't progressing in all facets. Yeah. You know? it's, it's not only that, man. It's just that everybody that goes to New York, they all go for the same reason. Try to make it happen. Well, it's only 1% of the 1% that make it happen. I mean, I learned a lot of skills. I did learn a lot of skills, man. I'm an introvert, Mike. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a complete introvert guy. You're a what? Well, introvert. Introvert? introvert. Completely introvert. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm completely know, right? introverted. Come on. Yeah, bro, bro, bro. bro. I've gone out with you. Bro, when I, when I was a kid, bro, in my teenagers, even my college degrees, back when I was doing my bachelor's degree, bro, I was timid to the, to the core. I was, you know what, I was back in the day. Too. Yeah, timid, 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 bro. But I, man I managed to just not allowed introvert to determine my outcome in life. See, it was a decision. Now, I'm now, even though knowing that part of my life is always there, I don't allow it to determine my outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So, what I tell people is, I'm an extrovert by choice. By choice, I choice, I choose to be extrovert because it has given me results, right? It has developed my confidence. But inside my heart, inside my heart, right? I'm an introvert guy. Introvert, I built the skills to not, you know, allow those things to affect me. Even though you saw me just, you know, picking on girls and shit like that, it's still there. But those things, that's what, even today, when I make sales, I get like a up and down emotion to sit down and talk with a, with a customer, but I still do it. Mm -hmm. I still go through it. I just, it's like the three second rule. I just put my phone, bang, they call me, I'm ready. Right. So those things has never, uh, not one said never, but in the last 10 years has not determined my outcome. Kind of shit, man. Are you, mm. do you think you'll stick around Milwaukee or will you move to a no, more rural place to, to raise the kids? No, countryside. We're looking for countryside. I'm looking for countryside, my own land, my own home, bro. Mm -hmm. No, not staying in the, in the city. The problem with the uh, uh, U.S. cities is that it's the wokeness, man. It's wokeness, bro. The p the guys handling these cities, man, they're skinny guys that has no testosterone with them. Would you go and walk with people like that? Of course not, man. That's why you should not stay in the city. You have to go out, buy a lamb, have a multiple babies, bro, right? And make sure that they just do better for the next generation. Yeah. That's, that's the mission. And at the same are. time... At the same time, make sure your goals are met, right? You have goals, but the goals go deeper now. Not, not, uh, the goal's not only for you, just to make sure that the next generation can just strive to the next level. Well, I think this is something that's lost on Americans. We, we mm. act like it's wrong for you to get help from your family. Whereas yeah. if you go to, let's say, Greece, I'll, I'll pick Greece out of a hat, all right? People have been living there for thousands of years. And you might live on a plot of land with a house that your great, great, great grandparents have lived in. And you're using a pot that your great grandmother used to use. Like mm -hmm. there are things that are just passed down, the land, the business, the uh, even, even things that you cook with, recipes. The, and it's supposed to be that way. And your family is there to help you out. And you're not on your own. You work together as a team. You are a tribe. Okay, 
you're a fucking, you're a tribe and you work together. And I've noticed this in East Asian cultures, especially where the, the grandparents will, will uh, you know, collect money from all the grandkids and the, the, the daughters and sons and nephews and nieces, and they pull it together. And, you know, someone needs to, a loan to buy a house. It comes from the family, not from the banks. They don't get gouged mm-hmm. on interest rates. And in the U.S., we have this expectation that I have to start from scratch every generation, which is ridiculous. It's it takes stupid, generations bro. to build up wealth. It takes generations to get accumulate land and success or even to just survive. And people will act like people will pull something out their ass where they, we, we, we as Americans love to use the word privilege. You're privileged. All right. And we overuse it and we'll go. And someone's like, Oh, I live in, um, like, you know, Tommy, uh, yeah, he lives in his father's house in, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in, um, I don't know, in Brooklyn. It was his grandfather's house. Oh, uh, and you're like, well, well, yeah. Do you know how hard it is to buy a home in Brooklyn? Good for Very him. Very hard, bro. Oh, he's Very privileged. Hard. Like, no, this fucking, that's what a family does. His grandfather bought a house when yeah. it was a slum, when, when everyone was like, I'd rather eat fucking dog shit than live in Brooklyn. And then all the fancy people move there. So, like, yeah, he should. Mm. That is, that's how it's supposed to work. A lot of boomers in generation C, what they're doing is they're selling the house and just going to retire in, in Florida. Worst thing you can do for your next family. They will resent you more for doing that. Mm-hmm. Even in my family, I have aunts. They're, they're selling their house after paying it for 30 years, bro. Because their kids don't want to live there anymore. It's like... You know what how, are you doing? Man? How it's, important it is to be able to own a fucking home, even even if you give it to the kids and they rent it out, they could they could mm. use use that rent money to get a, a home in a place where they want. You never know what, what's going to happen in the future, man. You never know what's going to happen in the future. What if if we have another COVID nineteen plus twenty, right? And not only we have the we supposed to have a virus, but people go crazy, and all of a sudden this building just fall apart and everything goes straight. Hey, I, at least I have a place to live in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Or a place where, you know, people, I think that the last generation did a poor job transferring what really matters. Really? And I think they took some of those things that were very simplistic and didn't seem like a very important and threw them in the, in the trash. And they only took the thing that the scene as a quick um, reach, right? Mm-hmm. That would be monetarily most of the time. If we have two people working, we got more money. And if we had only two kids, then maybe we have more money for us. But then when you sit down with these family men, they cannot, they don't even have the money to just pay for life insurance. It's crazy. No, they're usually up to the next in debt. They, yeah. They, they don't realize what debt really is. That debt is slavery. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll take as much money. You know, we're going to get in debt. Well, you're going to get in debt to buy a piece of land that you know is going to matter no we're getting um hmm. we're getting uh jet skis and it's like you fucking dumb prick you're gonna get mm. in debt for a jet ski no no what are you doing like I, I a lot of my understanding of gen z comes surprisingly through tiktok and i see their comments on certain stuff and a lot of it is they've been taught to resent their parents and the boomers did a shit job of passing on culture. And I think it was a shit job passed on to them. But like, I saw one where people were talking about their, their fathers were immigrants and they had houses mm-hmm. in other countries, whether it be Jamaica, Mexico. And they were like, I don't even want to go there. And I was like, do you know how amazing it would be if, if like, I'm so, if I had a, you know, like a grandfather who had a house in Ireland, I'd mm-hmm. go visit and get away from, from the U S to have yeah. this other you know, a property in another country, like that's not, it's not easy to do. And it, it's very important and crucial, you know, cause you can, you can rent that out. You can Airbnb, mm-hmm. you could. make more more money on top of that money. I, well, might, yeah. I was going to, I was going to tell you, um, um, I have to get going because Kasini has to go downstairs. Oh yeah. That's fine. We've been going for like a long ass time. Anyway. But man, uh, <laughs> We can just go long, 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 keep talking, talk, talking about good things, man. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me, bro. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I know we uh, 
we we have these conversations anyway and we're always like why don't we just record them just it would have just been a just, phone conversation yeah, anyway yeah. instead of being a phone conversation two hours it's a podcast two hours a great quarantine anyway man yeah 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 next time um let me know let me know and we i can just hop on again um thank you so much mike is a great comedian by the way just make sure you like and subscribe to this stuff <laughs> <laughs> thanks dude yeah all right man